Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and today what we're going to do is a review of round one of the URC which is the United Rugby Championship new competition replacing the Pro 14. This was the first weekend of it and it was awful exciting. It's, it actually seems to be a really good standard of rugby. There was a good excitement about it and that's probably because club rugby had been away for quite a bit. It's probably because we have the proper league being away uh, since the Rainbow Cup and with Bennett on winning. And it just felt like kind of a while to have a new proper season. Hopefully this season can go interrupted. And a few things to mention off the bat. How correct was I about Nathan Doak? Great player, he's made his appearance now for Ulster. Can't remember if it was his debut or not. De debut in this competition for sure. Comes off the bench for John Cooney and he scores his first try for Ulster. This guy's gonna have a massive future and unfortunately for Shanahan, maybe that he now he's played well, maybe Doak will continue performing and maybe push even Cooney out of the team. But we will see probably uh, more likely him coming off the bench. Also very solid with his kicks. Looks like a natural successor to Cooney. What we'll do now is have a look at the scores of round one and just have a quick go through them, quick chat about them, just to see how your team got on. So first game, Zebra v the Lions, the South Africans debut in this competition against the weakest of the sides in the Pro 14. Will they be the weakest again this year? Very much possibly that scoreline does flatter them because it took up until about the 60th minute, 58th minute for uh, the Zebra to actually get any points on the board. Oh, 51st minute for the first try to go over. They were already however many points behind this with zero points on the board and then they got a couple of tries in quick succession to allow them to you know, not have an embarrassing scoreline is what we saw. So really good showing from the Lions. The Lions obviously look strong but what is evident across all of the South African teams so far is that they are struggling without their starters who are away on South African duty. So hopefully when they come back eventually in the next few months uh, we will be able to see stronger South African teams because they just weren't able to do well, especially in the other games against the stronger teams in this competition. And we want to see this to be the strongest competition. But still good to see the Lions get their first uh, win up on the board. Uh, next, we had Ulster Glasgow Warriors. Already previously mentioned, it was we had uh, Nathan Doak scoring his first try. The overall, a very good game. Stuart McCluskey got man a match in this game. Very strong, high scoring game. Uh, I do advise if you haven't seen it go look at the highlight package of it obviously I can't show it here really good game to watch I only cut the highlights of it myself uh, next we move on to Cardiff Rugby and Connacht the only Irish uh, team to lose during the whole thing but Cardiff Rugby look really strong and Connacht just not picking up the pace as previously mentioned in my preview videos which more will come out but I will probably just do the two remaining shields and just wrap up the Welsh shield due to the competition starting it really snuck up on me uh, to be fair, this was one of those games that could go either way for Connacht and Cardiff, very similar level sides. So really good win for Cardiff Rugby and hopefully Connacht can pick up. Obviously they still show that they can put points on the board which is what they're looking for. Hopefully this continues throughout the season. And we got a fantastic start to the season for Benetton against the Stormers. Uh, this is the final game that I did not watch uh, with Benetton winning. Uh, they were losing for the majority of the game but eventually got ahead in the in the dying minutes I would say. So as you can see now on the screen it was in the 70 minute that they got the try that was able to give them the lead over the Stormers. A nice four point lead. Uh, this is just proof that then the Stormers, the Bulls, the Lions and the Sharks can do it. They're springbok players to come back from international duty but they're still going to be away for a few more weeks so i can see a struggle continuing but great to see from benetton and italian rugby that they're still able to put it up to these players it wasn't just a once-off fluke and even losing their best player in garbizi uh, they are still able to put together a great performance they still have michelle lamaro uh albernoz was there playing today he was quite a good player and of course they have their strong wingers and uh, montione being my favorite of them so it looks like they're going to be able to carry on over the Rainbow Cup form. So let's see. Hope that carries on throughout the coming weeks. And then for a game that I watched in full was the Leinster v Vodacom Bulls. Very, very good game for Leinster. Very strong start to a team that's going to be wanting to aim to win this competition. They did not look like losing. And they even experimented with putting props on the opposite side of the scrum. We had Keane Healy coming on as a tight head prop. And we had Andrew Porter coming on as a loose head prop. Despite us having, you know, sufficient cover because obviously if you just swap those two players around uh, you would have you know uh, Porter being able to go on the tight head side and Healy being able to go on the loose head side but we still were able to dominate the scrums and Michael Alatoa made obviously his league debut 
a very strong scrummager so maybe they wanted to fit him in maybe it's an air few request to want stronger options outside of Keane Healy in the loose head side because Andrew Porter is obviously behind Tyg Furlong which is very hard to displace do we want our best two props on the pitch at all times at international level and club level that could be a way of doing it and this certainly didn't do that idea any harm where we clearly were winning penalties we were winning scrums against the head and a very good side Jack van der Fleer putting his hand up to try to get back into that Irish 7 jersey which is really really hard to keep hold of over the last few seasons with Will Connors Dan Levy all being fantastic players all from Leinster unfortunately and now there's even more players like you know your Timoney uh, you have Coons coming up I know he's not a 7 but like these back row players being able to shift around everyone it is just a very hard position to keep a hold of for any player in Ireland at the moment so it's good to see Van der Fleer putting such a massive performance in the scoring the first try within five minutes I believe it was and keeping the Bulls a, a historically good side in South Africa as uh, tryless and uh, not so much scoreless uh, it was a very good feat and we were here watching the game we were very dominant on the defensive line Bulls did get close a couple of times but we were able to defend out and win penalties to get out of that situation or convince uh, or make them commit uh, knock-ons and such then Edinburgh and Scarlets also obviously a good game the standard of the rugby so far maybe it might be defensive fault but uh, there's been high scoring games there hasn't been any uh, dirty uh, rotten boring games to watch all high scoring all very exciting and Edinburgh and Scarlet's is no different to this even t- even though Scarlet's lost they played fairly well uh, John D- Davies put a massive fan on Blake Kinghorn like he does uh, but Edim- Edinburgh were able to pull their way through a very good team they had a bad season last year hopefully they have a much better season this year despite losing one of their better players and doing van der Moura and um, hopefully they're able to carry on and continue a good game Here's another game that I watched live then, it's Munster v the South Sea Sharks. Uh, of course, who is the man who scored both <laughs> two of Munster's tries is Simon Zebo on his return back. The commentators were making fun of him for maybe adding a bit of weight, but he was just wearing a larger jersey and it did not flatter him too much. But he put in a really good performance, he still has got the pace, he was burning people on the outside for fun. He has the skills, he was doing silky touches, he was doing outrageous things that you don't expect other players to do and I don't think even he expects to do until he does it. But it's great to see that kind of player back in Ireland and maybe he can get a couple of caps for the Irish squad. I, initially when he came back I didn't really want him to get back into the Irish squad. Not so much that he's a bad player but I would rather we concentrate on the younger talents and will he be as good uh, in the coming seasons. I know this is a depleted Sharks team at the moment but he was dominating on that wing. He was able to get around the outside, outpacing lads, uh, ready for the second bounce of balls and all that. Got, got his bit of luck but it takes really good players to get that luck as well. And of course, we've got the try score, another try score, and Gavin Coombs really putting his hand up for number eight. As previously mentioned, the Irish back row really tough to get into, so many talented options. And the Munster front row were dominating again on this uh, South African pack. But we always have to remember, and I keep having a caveat throughout this video, is that the South African teams don't have their international players, where Irish teams, Welsh teams, Scottish teams do at the moment. And they may not all be starting, like we see some of them on the bench, uh, some of them being rested or whatever but these these teams tend to have you know your your most of your first 15 of what you plan on having whereas the likes of the South African teams they're missing all their superstars at the moment but overall Munster did not look like losing that game the winger for the Celsius Sharks whose name I do forget his name is coming up as Yaw Pinks, uh, excuse the pronunciation of it, but he looked like a very exciting player to be on the wing. He was so fast, he was able to cut inside a lot. So I quite like the look at him and I'm looking forward to seeing And of course you have Werner Kroc playing in the centre. Once he gets his, his full strength backline back, we would get to see him being released against different teams. But Munster on the day were very, very good. And then another great thing for Ireland is that Craig Casey got man of the match he was had a fantastic game despite at the start kind of stalling a bit at the rucks and he was actually even giving away one of the rare times that I've seen it given is that he held the ball at the back of the ruck for too long and that got given against him and rightly so he was uh, taking a piss a bit with that at that, at that stage uh, but he was able to get a nice snipey try and overall really ran the show of the game 
and he was against Ruin Pienaar and the size difference there, it just did not matter despite it being about two foot and the difference. It, you would think Craig Casey was the monster of a man on that day. The final good thing for Ireland is that Carberry, although having to, having to go off for Ben Healy, maybe he's to look after him for injury, maybe picked up a knock. Carberry played relatively well, looked a bit rusty, but Ben Healy coming on still looked very good and he knocked a fabulous kick over from about 50 metres out with room to spare. So it was really nice to see that coming up for the future in Ireland that we have this nice depth of players again and it looks like Munster's strong squad like I mentioned in the video previously their aim will be to win this competition and Leinster really have to look out for these because Munster will be able to beat anyone on their day and the final game that literally just happened is Dragons v Ospreys I thought Dragons were actually going to come out and win this after me saying that they're going to really struggle in my most recent video, I haven't even spoke about Ospreys yet, but Garrett Anscom came back into the fray for Ospreys and he showed his class again, he, despite missing a year and a bit of rugby, nearly two years, he showed every bit of being the starting 10 for Wales, and or starting 15 for Wales, he really controlled the game, nice little things over the top, lovely cross fields, uh, really nice, he spread the play, controlled the tempo, all the classic cliches that you want your 10 to do, he did, uh, with a bit of flair, and that's not saying anything against Sam Davies on the other side, Sam Davies was a very, very good player as well, but Anscom just that little level above, and it probably helped that he had Reese Webb on his inside, uh, despite this the substitute scrum half for Dragons coming on Roger Williams, he did very well uh, but Reese Webb was able to help with Anscombe run the game uh, for the Osprey side and they finally got their grips to the game and just start pounding uh, the Dragons back and every time Dragons tried to get on the attack again they seemed to knock it on or give away a penalty and uh, they were just under massive pressure that, and they really wanted to win the game and I don't blame them at being a local derby and with the Welsh Shield and European qualification all on the line here this Ospreys team not having uh, Adam Beard starting not having Alan Wynne Jones starting uh, this could have been a chance for uh, a strong enough Dragons team uh, to be able to get the win here but they just weren't able to do it there was a big chance at the very end of the game but they gave away a penalty in the scrum I believe and it just didn't fall for them so after that we will take a quick look at the league table I'm sure it hasn't updated fully yet but of course we have Leinster up here at the top if we get the full table up we'll be able to see why so it's probably points different the points differential is probably saving them at the moment yeah they're only it's only by three points they're ahead of um, Munster by but it is obviously not going to shape up too much very little point in actually looking at the table today but uh, just having a gawk, gawk at it here this is obviously not how I expected to finish maybe Leinster and Munster are going to be near the top of the table but this will start to take shape in five to six games time but it's nice just to have a little look at it they haven't updated uh, Dragons and Osprey score yet uh, so it actually isn't absolutely perfect yet we will see the Ospreys move up a bit and the Dragons drop down a little bit this is how it stands after round one so that was my round one review we had a couple of really good performances come from the likes of Garrett Anscombe despite him not getting man in the match but Craig Casey and Josh van der Fleer were two of probably the strongest performance I saw or witnessed uh, with third coming as Anscombe because I thought he was just brilliant throughout even though it was um, it was Michael Collins for the Ospreys who got man in the match he started off in 13 and then moved to full back and he had a pretty strong game as well but for me I would have picked Anscombe um, but maybe that's a bit of bias coming from the way he started this season injured and he's coming back into it but overall really good weekend for the Irish sides Bar Connacht let me know how your team got on down below uh, did you enjoy the review what things do you think I should talk about uh, and next, what players do you think I should concentrate on in the coming rounds of this of this United Rugby Championship? Overall, I think the standard of the rugby this weekend was absolutely fantastic and much higher than the usual of the Pro 14. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the excitement coming back into the game. And it was great to see the Italian sides uh, do relatively well. I know Zebri had zero points on the board, like I said, for however long, but they were able to come back into the game with a couple of nice tries. And it just seems the tackling rugby is the, is the way of the world. And so far, the 50-22 rule has not completely ruined the game of rugby, despite people fretting on my previous video. And if you want to understand what the 5022 rule is just go onto my youtube channel there and you'll be able to see why so if you enjoyed this video subscribe to the channel i will be doing uh, roundups as often as i can i will hopefully watch most of the games so i kind of know what i'm talking about uh, if you enjoy graphic design stuff or me posting about rugby players where a bit more instant uh, go onto my instagram the link for that will be down below uh, like i said subscribe to the channel like comment about watch how you think your team got on the weekend how do you think the south african teams are going to get on when all their players come back uh, when everyone is fit who is the strongest team i think it's leinster and it's going to be between Munster as well who else do you think is going to be up for that final 
I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you have a good week coming up. And of course, uh, good luck. Bye. Thank you.